Washington, July 20th. <gasps> it's my birthday. Happy birthday to you. Hello and welcome to the Oklahoma Hiker YouTube channel. Today I'm hiking with my husband David and my best friends Mo and Jeff to the summit of Mount Washington in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. This is a location that's long been at the top of my bucket list of hikes. Owing to its physical challenges, otherworldly alpine and subalpine zones, and notoriously volatile weather. For our journey, we decided to ascend by way of the Amanusic Ravine Trail to Lakes of the Clouds Hut. Then we used Crawford Path to get to the summit. For the descent, we took the Gulfside and Jewel Trails, which made for a roughly 10.5 mile hike with nearly 4,000 feet of elevation gain and subsequent loss. The ascent up Amanusic Ravine started out gently, but as you got in further, it steadily became steeper and rockier. Many hikers prefer to ascend this trail when making a loop with the Jewel Trail, as it's perhaps more difficult to descend the rocky terrain of the ravine than it is to climb up it, especially in wet conditions. At around the 2.3 mile mark, there's a path that leads off the right side of the main trail to a beautiful pair of side-by-side -side waterfalls. It's not a long detour, but it's well worth the time and effort. After the optional trip over to the waterfall, the trail gets substantially steeper and remains so for the most part until you reach Lakes of the Clouds Hut. Much to my surprise, even in wet conditions, my trail runners gripped the rocks well and I had no problems with slipping, a welcome grace on such a challenging trail. The further up the mountain you climb, the better the views become, both in the direction of the summit ahead of you and the vast valley behind you. Even in cloudy conditions, the views were just breathtaking.
As you get closer to treeline, you will notice changes in the environment around you. The trees don't grow quite as tall here, the rocks are much larger than before, and the wind can really begin to pick up. Conditions at this altitude can be quite harsh and everything must work hard to survive. Plants here have special adaptations to cope with the extreme conditions. They grow close to the ground in locations where they are sheltered from winter winds by snowbanks. Many have evergreen leaves that eliminate the need for energy to refoliate each spring, and many have hard, waxy leaves that slow the loss of moisture. Hikers too must cope with these conditions by being prepared to add or subtract layers of clothing because conditions can change in an instant. A little over three miles up, you really do reach tree line. And uh, for us, we're in the clouds, but you can see, you can see, uh, I'm not watching a hotel right down there. We are all making it up. David and Paul are crushing it. <laughs> and we are almost to Lake of the Clouds Hut. hut was probably my favorite stop of the entire trip. It was an odd thing to catch sight of a building hidden in the clouds, connected to the outside world by only foot trails. The inside had an energy all its own. Suddenly there are other people, the smells of food, and you're sheltered from the elements. I think what made Lakes of the Clouds hut such a memorable stop for me was knowing that everyone there was on a journey. It's not a destination, but a place between a beginning and an ending, and everyone there had a different story to tell about what led them there. For us, the journey was up another 1,200 feet to the summit of Mount Washington via Crawford Path. Washington is no joke and hikers must plan accordingly. It can snow any month of the year and wind speeds are routinely in excess of 50 miles per hour.
Before our visit in late July, temperatures above treeline were in the mid-50s, with occasional wind gusts up to about 30 miles per hour. Visibility was at times extremely low for this leg of the trip, so we made sure to stay within eyesight of one another. As we approached the top, the clouds broke just a little and gave a sight of the numerous buildings and towers on the summit. We had our mind on just one of those buildings, the snack bar. After our well-deserved mountaintop meal, we connected with the Gulfside Trail, which takes you by the tracks where the Mount Washington Cog Railway runs. Say go for it.
decided to use the Jewel Trail for our descent. It's less steep and rocky than the Amanusic Ravine and has great views of the Presidential Range when it's not cloudy. Thank you.